Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. It's another wonderful Wednesday, um, another episode of the WTF Weekly Technical Forum sponsored by Love My Tool. Uh, today's special guest um, is a um, uh, uh, invite back, um, uh, a repeated performance by uh, Tom Tosh, uh, who we interviewed um, a couple weeks ago. Tom is a great friend, and um, he's been working as a, a consultant, and he's uh, he's got some really interesting product uh, that he had uh, developed, and he's ready to launch both his company uh, and the product. The company name is uh, Key Metrics. Key as in the metrics that you want to, to that that matters, and uh, and the product is called Easy Trace. Uh, before I uh, introduce Tom, let me let me uh, introduce uh, my uh, esteemed panel. Paul Orford, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you very much. And dark, um, dark and cold uh, UK evening. Uh, so so give us a give us an update on your company. How, how's it going? Um, we have been ridiculously busy for the last two months. We, we went through August where we all sat around twiddling our thumbs and did next to nothing. And uh, since that time, since everybody came back off holiday in September, we've been basically going flat out. Uh, so it looks like, looks like people have excess budget and they just want if they're going to spend it, might as well spend it with you, right? Yeah, they just want to spend before Christmas, I think. <laughs> and, and, and then I, we have Tim. Hi, Tim. Hello, everybody. Good day, everyone. So you're back. You're back, and your audio problem is gone, and and uh, that's what happens when you have too many gadgets, Tim. <laughs> uh, isn't that the way you measure life by the toys you have, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And finally, uh, Tom. Um, good evening. Good afternoon, Tom. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. So I asked you to give me um, um, an abstract of your talk, and you actually made a promise. Yes. And, and the promise is that you're going to show the world um, how you're going to bring visibility to the network, end-to-end -end visibility, right? Talk, tell, tell us about that. All right. Well, um, going back to the basic concept of, of Easy Trace, it's that uh, when it is on a computer, it basically turns that computer, it uses a fraction, a tiny fraction of the computer's resources, memory and disk, to create sort of a recording environment on that computer which will record network traffic as well as the internal processes. And we're, we're speaking Windows-based computers here. So that when a, an issue occurs and the, the computer has been in a recording mode, the trigger for the whole system is really a user experiencing a problem. They, they take the move that sets the trigger and uh, that really sets in play all of the, the devices that we have linked together into this symptom trapping method. Uh, we call Easy Trace a symptom trapper. And we know that the, uh, it's the user who experiences these anomalies on their, from their system point of view and we give them something very, very simple to do. Just click a button, essentially, as we're going to see. And they will re basically take a snapshot of this critical recorded data that we're going to bring in, or someone will bring in, we can do it, and analyze to find out what happened. And uh, in our, one of our most uh, recent um, I Love My Tool uh, presentations, we, uh, we heard the word proactive. I've heard this word for many, many years in, in, my, uh, in my experience. And the question is, how do we be more proactive? Well, um, we designed Easy Trace. Really, the model for it was voice and data recorders on, on aircraft. Uh, certainly, when the uh, aircraft gets into a, a problem, uh, having no data whatsoever is almost inexcusable. Uh, and the reason that air, air, airline uh, safety is as good as it is, we think, is because they've had the data to analyze and understand what happened and then take the measures to, to correct and prevent it from happening again. And we think that we can achieve over time the same kind of results in our wonderful IT industry. But we just need the tools. So the, we made our attempt to do that with Easy Trace. Now the heart of Easy Trace, the very first, if someone says, well this sounds exciting, what would I do to get to the next step? Well, uh, the next step, and usually our first step is a customer that comes to us with a, a problem. 
they've got some issue that they've been fighting on for weeks and not making any progress. And they've made changes. They thought they might have corrected, and the problem comes back to bite them. This is usually our, our, our typical, within, within the very narrow differences, our typical uh, person that comes to us with an interest. So the, the first thing we tell them to do is, OK, get us an ordinary workstation, a Windows workstation that we can use as our control point. And I'm going to be sharing some screens. And in fact, for this presentation, I've got everything set up to go live. That We're just going to be taking you th the, the audience through all of the steps very fairly quickly uh, that make the pieces of Easy Trays work. So what I'm going to do now, if that's all right, is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, bring up the Easy Trace console. So once we get a machine, we install the Easy Trace console. It takes less than 10 minutes to install. It's just a real simple install. It's a Windows-based computer again. So I'm going to share my screen. And um, let me do one thing here. Let me bring that up and then share screen. OK. There it is. Now I'm sharing, and hopefully you get to see. And I hope my sound is coming through better than last time. Much better. All right. Yes, I think we've got all of our, my problem was an old computer, and that's, it was retired. So anyway, hopefully you can see the Easy Trace control point console here. Uh, let me know if you can see it. Yep. And uh, through each of these main buttons, we kind of go down in time for, uh, for the control of the Easy Trace system. And again, it's, it's, it's very granular and very simple. There's not a lot of learning curve to this. So up here in control point configuration, we give you the basic things of what you can do there. Earlier, I set up you folks to be to receive email alerts when Easy Trace, uh, some user is going to report an issue. We're going to get an email alert if we have set that up. And in this case, we've set up so that the Love My Tool panel can receive an alert in this live Easy Trace demo. We can, we can do other things as well here, but basically uh, that's that. Then the first step towards, once we have the control point in place, now we have to consider our endpoints. Those are the user stations that are reporting problems, as well as the potential servers involved, as well as, and this is less commonly used, we can put Easy Trace on a tap, uh, have a little computer attached to a tap and also attached to the network, and we call that intralink monitor. And Easy Trace can be, um, we're going to find out that can be part of the Easy Trace triggered system for end to end visibility. But the interlinks can be extremely important when to trying to determine if we run into a network problem exactly where the frame loss is occurring. Because as you know, the networks today, they can run through firewalls and through all manner of paths. And it's like shooting a, a string of Christmas tree lights to try to find where the issue is. And so um, I'll be coming back to just reminding that this whole system is triggered by a user experiencing an issue. So, um, so when we go to endpoint deployment, let me just click this one here. When it comes to deploying, we just build these installers. And it just takes a second to build. And these installers are honed to this particular control point. So it's going to build three executable files location right on the control point, and you take that file over to the endpoint, whether it's a workstation, a server, or an um, intralink monitor, and just put it on the machine and install it. It will go and find the control point, they'll link up, and that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. It just takes a minute. And, it, and when you install the installer, it's maybe two minutes um, to, to bring the thing up. I'm going to skip over application reporting setup for just a second. I'm going to go to the endpoint. So as you deploy these endpoints, they will automatically appear in the control point here. Here we have on the top line our workstations. I'm, I'm, I hope you can see my cursor that I'm highlighting here. I don't know if yes, that's good. Is it? Yes. Great. So we have workstations. We have a couple of servers. In this case, these are widely separated servers, maybe a thousand miles apart from each other, but they're critical towards some of our customers' applications. So we're going to need, need to get them involved here. And we don't have any intralink monitors. So um, that's what the, the basic uh, setup is for the endpoints. Also, we've got some statistics. Easy Trace control point can accommodate up to 200 max endpoints during in this current version. 
we're working on one that will accommodate many more and um, for scalability purposes. And right now we see we have three workstations, two servers, and no capture license is being used. We're about to change that. So what I want to do though is I want to go back one step and take you into the application reporting setup. We're going to find out that the way things get triggered is on specific applications. Like you might have a server dedicated to one application and another ser server dedicated to another one. Or it could be multi-tier type device or a multi-tier environment or a cluster server uh, environment. Uh, EasyTrace is equipped to, to handle all those virtual machines as well. So whatever your visibility needs are, we can get EasyTrace to, to play in that environment and get, you, get that device recording so that when an issue happens and a user reports it, that device will be triggered and save its data in a form of a snapshot that we can retrieve. So the real, one of the real mechanisms is to how do we do this server and not this server? Well, we create applications and tie servers to them. So let me create two applications. I'm just going to create uh, email and just use one just as a general. And then uh, database. Just, just to use as an example, so we create, and there's there's our there's our um, our two new applications. It says no paired endpoints. It means we haven't paired any server to this 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 endpoint yet. So uh, so that means we have the things created. The other thing that it does is when when the user is going to report, there'll be a thing in their screen to drop down where they will report on an application. So we just quickly manually sync what we've just created and it sends it out to our workstation endpoints so that when users report, they'll have these selections right in their drop-down menu. All right, so the next thing I want to do right at this point is tie one of my servers to my application. So first of all, I'm going to uh, do an edit here on my first email application. So it's my list of servers come up, and by the way, my control point could be a triggerable device as well, or it could be a workstation. We, we've made it pretty flexible. But normally, our control point, we like to keep it out of the picture. Just use it as a workstation control point. So my email application, I'm going to tie to this server right here. And that's, that's a server in another state. And my database application, I'm going to edit it and tie that to my database server. So now I've got I've got my servers tied to the app. I can I can tie 50 applications to one server if that's that's what you need. I mean it's it's designed to be that flexible. And I think it's a maximum available space of 50. So we normally don't deal with more, you know, only a handful really, less than six. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just manually sync again because I've just told my servers that they're now synced up to a, to a specific application. Now I'm going to go back to the main menu. Now, here's what we do to get things capturing. We have in EasyTrace this mode, and this mode means right now in green mode, it's simply the user can report. There'll be no triggering taking place. There'll be no capturing of data. The, the machines are not recording data if they're in green mode. In fact, when you take a machine and it has and it, that has been recording data out of a capturing mode, it will purge all of its data if you're going to set it back to green mode. So there's there's some um, you know, caveats there. So what I want to do is I've got workstations scattered around the, the, the country here, and I want to put them all into a capturing mode. So I, I can I can just click these two here and put them all right click. And then right click is kind of your friend here. We have various things, but the thing we're going to do is change mode. The next thing, yes, I want to I want to do it. So now what mode do I want? So here's the four modes of Easy Trace. Green uh, green mode of course is reporting, but the th the the uh, capturing modes are performance logging, that's yellow mode. That doesn't do any packet capturing at all. That just turns on the logging for Windows performance monitor. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in, in a specific thing for it. But uh, then you can do only packet capturing. Turns on kind of a WinPCAP capture thing on your selected adapter card. And then you can have both. Perform and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to go ahead and update all three of these. So we're going to, it's going out right now to the machines. 
And now I've just, voila, turned on capturing, recording on those three workstation endpoints. And you can Tom, see we're in yellow red mode. Tom, it's, I guess it's worth pointing out to our viewers that they can't see your pop-ups because you're sharing the main screen, but it's okay. We understand from your description. But ah, thank you for letting me know. Just, yes, just, I was I was wondering about. Thank you just, for. I just wanted to point out the product isn't failing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you, Paul. Yes, with uh, Google Share, I'd have to kind of focus on a screen, stop sharing, reshare again, and I, I think yeah. Thank you very much. I'll keep that in mind as I move through this. So now I'm going to go to my servers, and hopefully you can see this. I've still got two servers that need to be set up in a capture mode. So let me let me select both of them. Do it individually, of course, but I, you know, save time, change mode. Yep. Let's put them both in in the same performance mode as well. And now, uh, now my servers at two ends of the country are now recording. Now, the one thing I will mention about EasyTrace packet capture recording, we do not, on servers, in order to maintain maximum amount of time, EasyTrace slices each packet at 128 bytes. So we see pretty much what we need to see to determine if it's the network or if it's something else. The other thing that's important about that, we don't see very, but little customer data. So the security aspect of it is maintained. We don't see what's writing in those packets. And on the workstation, we capture a little bit more. We capture 256 bytes, uh, and that helps us determine a little bit about SQL queries and all that, but at least, you, get, you know, in other words, if we find out it's not the network, it gives us a little bit more of what to go to next. So we've got these in place, and um, I can go back to any device now from this control point. I wouldn't have to wait for a user to take a capture. With EasyTrace, I could pick on any device and simply right-click and take a remote snapshot. And maybe, you, do you see this? Do you see this, uh, this drop-down right here? No. No. There's a, little, there's a little screen that comes up with some options. And one of those is a remote snapshot. I, in fact, you know what? This is why we did it this way. You can actually see it on the main screen right here. Right? You see this. We, you know, we see the remote yeah, snapshot. We can, yeah, we can see that. What that does is basically has a control point go out and take a remote snapshot and basically does what a user would do. It takes data from that device and stores it on that device into a special place that we will come and retrieve. All right. Now the next step, we've got our application set up, our server set up, everything's capturing. The next thing I want to do is I want to enable triggering. I want my server to be triggered. My e if the user is reporting a problem with email, I'm going to want my email server to be triggered. If they report a database problem, I want my database uh, server to be triggered. And we're going to have an actual live user somewhere on our system report a problem with email here in just a few minutes. But first, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. So I'm sorry, let me go a step back. So on our main screen, excuse me, we go to triggering auto snapshots. And we go to email and it's disabled and we just simply enable triggering there. And yes, we make sure, we kind of go through a process where we make sure, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And there it is. And now we have triggering enabled. That's all there is to it. And now we've got end-to-end -end vis visibility with a user needing to report. Now let me ask, Paul, did you happen to receive the notification from EasyTrace earlier? It was sort of a test notification? Yeah, I did. Great. So um, we're going to see one actually coming from a live user here. And I just ne need to give the signal to my user. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so hopefully that will be done. So just a kind of a preview as she does this. And but go ahead, June. Go ahead and do it. He's currently speaking to his boss who's there helping him. Yes, that's right. And so um, you're going to find out, and this is this is one of the things that EasyTrace, as we used it, really helps do because who you put on this alert list. I mean, you might have a bunch of finger pointers in a meeting, and now we're all focused around a user problem. And if you put those people on the alert list, they're all going to know exactly who reported what when. And that really brings a team together, as I've seen. 
Uh, and it really gets the user involved. They're now doing something that's extremely important. So um, I'm going to ask, has that been done, June? I, I may have to leave the screen here for a second. Did you do it? Oh, hold on a second. Does anyone Has anyone received an email alert yet? I haven't got one yet. Okay, great. It should come. It, it may take a minute. She has done it, so that's great. So now uh, I think she we're, we're going to go into event management. And before we go there, just I want to pick out one little button here that we didn't didn't cover: performance data. On the perf perf logs uh, for Easy Trace, you can go in on a specific device and change a profile if there's specific statistics that you want to gather. Now, Easy Trace already you're going to find collects all the major ones that, that you would need to determine if it's a memory leak or a um, disk problem or something like that. But there may be some for web servers or database servers that you're particularly interested in and you could load those in here. Uh, I won't say much more about that. Well now that we've had an event and hopefully we'll get an email here pretty soon, we can go to event management and I see no events found. Hmm. Oh no, there it is. I'm sorry. Um, we do see an, an event. This was just taken now, and uh, this is a very, very import, important part of the Easy Trace system. A lot of times, when you get trace files and data from places, you don't know where they came from, what the, uh, the 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 user report was, and all this. With Easy Trace, all this is tied together into this event. And um, we're going to go to the. I love the way that's showing my local time. Right. <laughs> Yes. We'll, we'll, we have it in UTC time as well as local time, indeed. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. I was, I was just looking at the UTC time. Ah, right. Because we have things in, scattered in different time zones. And, um, and so um, I'm trying to see what shot this was taken on. Um, oh, okay. Okay, well, see, right here from the control point, I see that my user has taken on the other application instead of email. Um, I'm going to get her to do one on email next. Uh, her comment, everything's slow, severity low, all that. Um, Tom, I've ask, got, Tom, I've got a notification now. Great, notification came in. I'm going to ask her to do one more on the email application in the first drop-down box. And uh, the comments just put email slow, if you'll do that. Because on other, nothing is triggered, of course. We, we don't see that. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. And uh, if uh, my user will let me know. Um, again, we're usually operating in remote sites. So we know usually the email alert is the first way we know that a user has taken an issue. And it's only a matter of minutes. And going back again, our whole purpose for this is to allow the users to perform this very simple move to trap this data, alert us of it, and then this data, by the way, as it's trapped, stays on the endpoint for 10 days. You've got 10 days to go back and collect the event data for one of these events before Easy Trace automatically purges it. We're not going to keep data there just sitting there for forever. Um, but the whole purpose of this is to be able to cut the time from when a user experiences an issue. And of course, you know that sometimes you, it, it takes time for a, uh, an issue to occur. It may take a day, it may take a week, but at least when it does, Easy Trace System Trapper, Symptom Trapper is there to trap it, and we have it. And we can go back in time and, and, and really determine what happened uh, to it. By the way, that Recorded data also serves as kind of a baseline. We have like an hour or so of data leading up to this. So we have kind of a baseline. Um, so I'm going to go back to event management. And um, sure enough. Another, another notification as well. Okay. And um, there it is, the email application. Well, we should. I'm going to go back because it may take easy trace uh, uh, control point going out to these remote servers a minute or two to collect the data, not collect the data, I'm sorry, but to gather the notification data of the snapshot at the remote system. 
before bringing it back into the control point, notifying us here, and allowing us then to work with the data to bring it in. So now the user has, has done something extremely powerful. And before I move on to the next, let me just open it up if there's any comments or questions to, at this point. Because I've gone through quite a bit. And let's take a quick drink here. I've got a couple of questions, Tom. You, you explained about the slicing of the traces on the server and the workstation. Correct. Is that, is that a configurable um, parameter, or, or is it fixed at 128 and 256? It is not user configurable. And okay. the, reason, the reason for that is, although if a client wants a different slice size for anything, we can cut them a version of Easy Trace that will do exactly what they want. But we want to maintain security, plus one of the things we've learned is keep things simple as simple as possible. And it, we found that it, the vast majority of symptom, uh, rec uh, symptom requirements, we don't need any more than what we're collecting here. Especially, again, we go back to this concept of the first response tool. We may need other tools. We may need full packet captures. But at least on this first pass, getting visibility, visibility in place quickly and getting this data quickly gets us 80% down the road where we can choose if we need additional tools or or not. Okay. So with are that, there, are there any, are there any particular um, criteria regarding the runtime environments on either the cap in, in either the control point or the endpoints? Do you have to have a certain version of .NET or you know is there some sort of runtime environment that that's needed? Yes. Well. Easy Trace will detect the current version of current running version of .NET and put on the version that it needs, which is 4.0. Okay. So be be aware of that. Okay. If Easy Trace doesn't find it, it will it will put the environment on there. Okay. Which hasn't been a problem for most folks, and most folks are moving to 4.0. Yeah. All right. So let me go back to event management here, and I see that for some reason. Um, uh, I don't see my two snapshots. So let me do one thing. Let me. Uh, huh. Why isn't it there? Yeah, this. Uh, I said it was going to be a live demo, and I have so much confidence in it. But uh, uh, I think. Let me do this. Let me just exit the console, relaunch. It may just be a console refresh thing here on this new on this new Win Seven. I'm going to go back and screen share here just in a second. All right, bear with me. Operations, view console. Uh, are we back to screen sharing this or no? Not quite yet. All right, let me do this. Let me share this. And if it's not there, I'm going to. I said a little bit red faced. Right. Uh, for some reason, it just didn't get the um, it didn't get the one from the server. For some reason, I I worked on it before and it was working fine. And for some reason now, it just didn't do it on this one. The snapshot is there. In fact, in fact, if you look at the attachment in your email, you'll see a screenshot and you'll see a text file that will tell you a snapshot has been taken and it is on the server. I don't yeah. know why it's there, why, it, why this one isn't there. And uh, I think that the problem is it has less to do with Easy Trace and more to do with how Google Plus uh, screen share, right? Hmm. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Because I think you're screen sharing uh, one window, which is what I normally recommend people to do. You might want to share, screen share the entire uh, desktop. If you want to show uh, everything. Yeah. Before before I do that, however, yeah. um, uh, before I do that, uh, I'll ask in the meantime for one shot on the database application. Just one one more problem on the database application instead of email. I might have an issue with the email reaching out to the email server that I'll I'll look at. But uh, this is why when we install it, we do take test shots ahead of time, and. Um, uh, and make sure that the triggering is working. But I was saying, if you look in your text file that you received, you'll see the fact that a a triggered snapshot was taken and where it is. So even if it isn't showing up here right away, you can you can go get it because it's down there, it's on that server. 
Yeah, I've I've just looked at the um, text file I've got. It's it's good. It's got all the um, it's got working set information in it, so you could look at. Hey Tom, I just I put up the uh, the attachment. If you look at my screen, I just put up the attachment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me. Uh, is let me, that is that what you were referring to? Yes. Exactly right. Yeah. Does it say something was triggered? Do you see anything that says successful trigger? Yeah. Right. So this becomes sort of our meat behind the traces that we collect. You might have four or five traces around one event, and basically this becomes our collection point of exactly. And I, I think you might have seen the screenshot. So if there's errors on the screen, the user can basically just choose easy trace. Now let me do that. Let me stop sharing and bring up the user actual user report screen uh, and, and go back to sharing mode again. Bear with me. I'm reporting a problem here and uh, go back to sharing mode and there's a symptom reporting screen. Hopefully you can see this screen as I share it. Yep. And this is what the user sees. This is our one, two, three reporting system. So there's our other database email. Choose database. What's the severity? They have three choices of severity, how the problem is impacting them. Uh, earlier we thought that a lot of problems, more problems will get reported and the users won't neglect them if we make the problem uh, reporting system very easy. And then they can just put in a comment test and then we can have them take a screenshot or not. We can suppress the, the appending of screenshots to emails if the security is, a, is an issue. Uh, but at that point, they just report the symptom, and that's all there is to it. I, I won't take another one. I don't want your inbox to flood. But, um, but that's all there is to it. That's the reporting mechanism. Meanwhile, the recording system has already been set up, so any user can use this. They're, they're actually taking wire tar or PCAP-type trace files and stuff without even knowing it. So I'm going to go back to um, uh, sharing the um, the control point, and let's let's go back to event management. And um, I don't see the one on the database. All right. Well, let me go ahead and just work with this one event. When you have an event, when you have an event, and you want to bring the data into the control point, you just choose the event or multiple events, and then you just download. That's all there is to it. It tells you you got snapshots and uh, give you. A, can you see this progress screen? Probably not. You'll get a progress screen that tells you that your trace has been now downloaded to the control point. And let me see if we can open up the download directory here. Well, that's just another screen that you can't see with Google Share. I'm sorry, but what we've just done is we've taken we've taken our data from these remote endpoints and brought them into the control point, and from the control point we can we can configure parameters to then upload this data to an FTP server for analysis. But we have to bring them first into the central control point location. But it's just as easy as that. There's really, I think it's very logical and, and simple to to do. And so really, that's, that's, now that we've got the data, we've uploaded it, and now we just have the labs do the analysis and, and, and wait for the results. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, say that's pretty much our live demo here and um, open it up for any final questions or anything else that we might need to cover. In our ha This has been 30 minutes already, so I think it's been uh, uh, adequate for this time. What do you guys think? Let me stop sharing. Well, um, I want to I want to give more time to Paul, but uh, before I do that, Tim, what do you think? Well, one of the biggest problems out there is a conversation level. You know, have most of the time when you call for support, you know, turn the computer off, um, jump up and down three times, reboot it, and it may still be broken, or there still may be a problem. <clears throat> And we're seeing more and more problems on BYOD, bringing on devices. They're causing the problems, bringing malware in, inside threats, um, and causing problems. And with this, I've seen it run several times, and it very quickly allows you to determine, real quick, it allows you to determine, is it the user? Is it the computer? Is it the network? Uh, is there some services running that are not supposed to be running? And right. actually, this is cool because 
you can actually use this for a policy management. You can say, hey, I'm doing an audit today. Everybody hit their button by noon one time. And I can then just page these out and I can say, okay, Look at, look at all the services that are running. You're running, you know, the irregular services or violations. Uh, the other cool thing is that it, once you get the trace and you look at it, Paul, what's the first problem you have to solve in a network situation is whose fault is it? Everybody's saying it's their fault or somebody else's, right? Yeah. So this quickly eliminates that. I've seen it it's do it several time. times. Uh, and it's simple to operate. You don't have to, all you have to do is say, hey, people, when you got a problem, you hit button X, Y, Z, and they do it, and it's done. When I, when I, uh, when I met uh, uh, Tom the first time, um, in, in, you know, on, at the, where, where, I, where we actually, I see, uh, when we actually had the, the conversation, uh, I, know, I know him from his writing uh, for Love My Two, just never had a chance to talk to him. I, I asked him about the company, and I asked him, you know, if you could put it in, Words, you know, like less than a half a dozen words. What, what, um, what benefit he brings to uh, his customer? And I think he says something like, uh, "It stops the fist fight." Uh, we stop the finger pointing. Or stop the finger pointing. Right. right depending on the culture. Um, Paul, you're you're in the trenches. I mean, you're literally in the trenches. Does, does this piece of software does does that? Does it do that? Yeah, I think it's got tremendous promise because one of the biggest issues we have is you can imagine you're capturing diagnostic data of any sort, logs and trace data, etc. Um, and what you want to know, you want to know uh, in as tight a time frame as you can, when did the problem start? Exactly what time did the problem occur? And getting that correlation between the user's experience of the problem and the diagnostic data is always tricky. And we use certain techniques to try and help us do that. But the ability to to instantly mark something in this way, time correlate the user's experience with the diagnostic data, I think that's um, very powerful. Very powerful. I think the the things I guess the things we'd probably want, although as as Tom said, this is a first response type tool. One of the things we seem to get involved in uh, extensively is. Um, looking inside the data. So um, you're quite right that, that this data, as Tim said, it would enable you to determine whether it's a, um, a PC problem, a network problem, or a server problem. But beyond that, we probably need to look more inside the, um, in the, in the data. And so we probably need a bit more than the 256 bytes. We always try slicing to reduce the volume, but it always ends up causing problems for us and we miss the thing that we wanted to see and you know so right. but 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 as a first response tool yeah I can see the sense in that exactly. what, what, happen, what happens about um, I take it that the location of the data where it's staged can be configured Tom you, yes on a survey that you'd want to uh, yes uh, back in our uh, let me share the screen again real quick um, When we are configuring the con when we are figuring the control point initially, you'll be asked for the, the data directories. Yeah. And under control fo point configuration, um, let me make sure here. We're going. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's the control point's done at install. When you do endpoint deployment you're going to basically be able to before you build your installers you'll have a uh, you'll have a, a an option here for right. where to put the, for where to put the data exactly yeah. it's configurable yeah. okay yeah because obviously that's a big deal because you wouldn't want to direct the data to a critical disk or anything and uh, but that's yeah that's good hey paul one yeah. one thing i was going to mention is that i've have worked with tom a little bit on this and uh, Every customer that has deployed this and used it and has has had an incredible successful conclusion. Yeah. Um, and of course, like you mentioned, there's no such thing as one perfect tool. No. But this gives you visibility where you've never had it before. It's a new metric. And it, it and really so simple that you can deploy it throughout your network and when people need something, 
if they think something's wrong, they just hit a button, and their their management gets a copy of it. Uh, Team Metrics gets a copy of it. It's really really a uh, a whole different metrics to analysis and trouble yeah. problem responses. Well, the great thing is the great thing is it's capturing data that. Um, we would traditionally capture anyway, or the types of data, and, and certainly it's capturing data that IT professionals know how to use. It's not like it's creating something unique that you have to go on a four-week training course to learn how to use. That's right. But it's doing it in in such a clever way, and you know that that simplicity and uh, that ability to just take snapshots. That's I think that's great. I've had this discussion actually with um, two uh, large or test instrument type companies about the the challenge of correlating diagnostic data with the end user experience and the, and particularly one I've been talking to they're very focused on extending the capability of their uh, capture tools and the level of analysis that they can do but quite honestly the biggest biggest challenge out there in the real world is correlating the user's experience to the diagnostic data and I keep telling them this, but they keep ignoring me. So I think I'm, it's great to see Tom's doing something about it. It's long. It's a long process. You know, the, the, the when I started on this, I used to they used to believe in the term "build a better mousetrap, and the world will beat a path to your door." I don't yeah. believe that anymore. That's uh, <laughs> the better mousetrap will 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 the path will be beaten, but it's going to take some time. They just don't tell you how long. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And okay. you might, might not be home when when it hits you, when you're not going to. Yeah, it. you want to be home when the. Uh, when <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> hey, I um, I I I you know I I think that uh, I, I I'm always thinking about how to sell things. You know that just uh, I like I like selling things. Um, Paul, what's the best way you think that advice you can give to Tom? How 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 do we reach people uh, with this wonderful tool? How what's the best way to do it? Word of mouth. I mean, we're doing that. Um, if you were talking, if you're talking about enterprise IT, the best thing to do is form a partnership with a large supplier. That's my view. Mm -hmm. Or it's worth. I've never, I've never sold this stuff, so what do I know? But you know, well, I, I have an idea, and and um. So um, I'm going to close the show, and because uh, it, it is it is time, but stay on, and, and it's just a, it's just an idea that I want to share with you that might help Tom. Mm -hmm. So you. with that, with that, um, I'm going to close the show. Thank you, thank you, Paul, again. Okay. For coming for coming to us. So uh, keep in mind that we actually have four shows scheduled next week, just huh. because I'm going to be away for a whole month. So we want to you know, pre-record them, and and also uh, one of the show is is actually just a. Um, a, a holiday uh, get together um, uh, with Tim, so we'll, we'll do that um, uh, next week. Uh, so I hope to see you at least in one of those next week. Okay. All right. And um, and thank you, Tom. Uh, I uh, you know I I hope to see you uh, back here. Um, oh. You know the 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 only way to market you and your product is just you know just just keep beating them into submission. That's that's all we can. That's we. That's success all we can offer. After him. success story. That's all we can do. <laughs> we all have to offer. <laughs> and and thanks again, Tim. My pleasure. Hope everybody okay. else. So see you Great guys all next week. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> and go out there and be good. Bye bye. <laughs>